many of us don't tell ourselves the truth. And if we can't tell ourselves the truth and be honest about where we are, what we're feeling, what we're experiencing, what we're processing, if we have to walk into therapy and lie, if we have to walk into church and lie, you are not free. Patrice Washington, and this is the Redefining Wealth Podcast, where authenticity leads to alignment and abundance. Join us each week as we peel back the layers on what wealth truly means and dive into conversations that inspire, connect, and empower you to live your richest life. Get ready to challenge the status quo. It's time to redefine wealth for yourself. You're listening to the Redefining Wealth Podcast with Patrice Washington. This is the space that you come to each and every week to learn more about what it means to chase purpose, not money. And the only way that we can really chase purpose and make decisions from a place of faith, not fear, is to allow ourselves to be set free. That is our theme for this month. It's a brand new month. Happy April. And in the Redefining Wealth app, which you can download now on your iOS device or your Android device, the whole theme in our community is all about being set free because I want us to be a community that can redefine wealth for ourselves and live authentically and in the abundance that I believe is our birthright. And in order to do that, we've got to do the work. We have got to do our parts. We have got to give God something to bless. And so we created on my team a guide for you this month that is a tool and a resource to help you be set free. Not only does it make podcast recommendations to you from great podcasts that were all about freedom and liberation on this podcast, but we also have affirmations that you can print down, cut out, keep with you, commit to memory for yourself. A lot of these affirmations, 98% of them, I write and pray over myself. And they are the words that I use to speak over myself and I extend that to this community. And so for years, you guys have asked me for those affirmations. The guide is a way to get your hands on that. And there are really amazing reflection questions to make sure that you have not become a prisoner in your own life. Put yourself in a prison that you created. We're going to get into that further But download the app. You can also get to it on desktop at redefiningwealth.app and get into the community, meet other purpose chasers, and let's be set free together. So when we come back from the affirmation of the week, I will dive in to not five signs as I originally thought. I thought when I did the wisdom point earlier this week, it would be five signs. I have six signs. You're not as free as you think you are and what to do about it right after this affirmation. This week's affirmation is, I am free to live life on my own terms. I affirm my freedom to live life on my own terms, liberated from the constraints of societal expectations and judgments. With each breath, I embrace the power of my choice, confidently navigating my path with authenticity and purpose. I release the need for external validation, trusting in my own intuition and wisdom to guide me towards fulfillment and joy. As I honor my truth and follow the desires of my heart, I unlock the boundless potential within me. With unwavering courage and determination, I embrace the adventure of shaping my own destiny, knowing that my journey is uniquely mine to create and cherish. Declare with me today, I am free to live life on my own terms. Okay, so I have been thinking about the idea of living free for a while now, of course, for a while now. My friend Devon Franklin wrote a book years ago called Live Free. And I think that was a big part of getting me on the path of really exploring these things. And what I love about being exposed to those types of books is it allows us to ask ourselves better questions. This is why I put such deep reflection questions in the guides that I'm providing every month complimentary to this community, because I want you to ask yourself better questions. And so for years, I've been asking myself better questions. And baby, when you ask yourself a better question, you will get better answers. 
That is the truth. We talk about this all the time in the Institute for Redefining Wealth. And I was thinking during Redefining Wealth Live in October 2023, what should our theme be? Last year was meant for more. What should it be? And Marsha Ann Donaldson, our favorite Jamaican purpose chaser. I know we have so many purpose chasers, but Marsha Ann has been through Purpose to Platform, Command the Stage. She's now in Mastery Momentum. She spoke on stage during Redefining Wealth Live. And she did this motion where she put her hands up and her sleeves were so beautiful. And it looked like this beautiful bird just flying freely. And I said, that's it. I want the theme to be live free. I want us to be a community that understands that radical honesty and alignment will set you free. Those are the things necessary to put you on the path to abundance. I don't care what the surface level definition of wealth is. You guys have had enough of thinking about budgets and credit reports and debt elimination, and you have run yourself ragged and it's not necessarily garnered the results that you wanted. I am asking you to consider a different approach, which is to do your own work. Instead of thinking about budgets and all that stuff, what about your behavior? What about your beliefs? What about the things that you take with you into every scenario, every relationship, every job, every environment? That is the root of what needs to change if you are going to change, if anything in your life is going to change. And so let's start with defining free. Free means to not be under the control or in the power of another, able to act or be done as one wishes. Free means not or no longer confined or imprisoned. Free also means as a verb to be released from captivity, confinement, or slavery. (sighs) We don't even realize how many of us carry the illusion of freedom. We think that we are free. But many of us only make decisions from the control or power of another. We only make decisions if other people are going to agree with it. We only take a step forward if somebody else says that it's okay. We are confined and imprisoned, sometimes even in something that feels purpose-driven that we created. Some of us are in captivity to the labels, the titles, the houses, the degrees, the certification, the stuff. And we don't even know ourselves anymore. Some of us have not even met ourselves and we are 40 and 50 years old. At 43 years old, I feel more acquainted with myself than I ever have in my life. Some of us have used all of these things to build a pretty prison that looks so cute to the outside world. And yet we sit in it full of people, full of notoriety, full of fame and acclaim and applause and accolades. And we feel lonely. We might as well be in solitary confinement. We are lonely in plain sight with tons of people and eyeballs watching us. Many of us carry the illusion of freedom because it's pretty because it looks good to others. And I am proposing that for us to truly walk this thing out and have the type of wealth that we get to define for ourselves and the abundance that we desire, it is time to be set free. It's time to be set free. I'm sure you probably have heard this before, but did you know that elephants are one of the most powerful creatures on the planet? Their mammoth-like size and strength would allow them to crush any obstacle and go absolutely anywhere they please. The truth is nothing could stand in the way of a determined elephant. So how is it that so many elephants have become so passive, they can sit in zoos and circuses without flinching, without incident? I was watching something about how elephants are trained and I looked this up. So historically, many elephant trainers have engaged in a practice known as elephant chaining. The concept is so simple. When an elephant is a baby, you tie them to chains or ropes that are too strong for a baby elephant to break through. As they struggle against the rope, it burns and it tears into their skin. It causes pain as they try to free themselves. 
So to avoid that bad feeling, they just stop trying to escape. And as they grow to a full size, the trainers will continue using the same flimsy ropes that an adult elephant could easily break through, but won't. Because the elephant remembers the pain of struggling against the rope and they will never again test it to see if they can escape. So the rope, no matter how weak it may be, will hold that elephant forever. My question to you, to us, as a redefining wealth purpose chasing community, is what have we allowed ourselves to become chained to? When was the last time you tried to get free of some of these labels, these titles, that relationship, that environment, that experience, that thing, And you remember the pain associated with it. So now you just stop trying. Even in all your brilliance and all your power and all your glory with everything that you have and all your beauty, you just stop trying to pursue anything different, even though you keep feeling the nudge and the tug that it's time to be free and it's time for you to do something different. What does this look like? Number one, I would say you are still, despite listening to the Redefining Wealth podcast, for those of you who have been OG listeners and purpose chasers for some time, you have heard about Redefining Wealth. You have heard that you get to determine what wealth looks like for you. You have heard that the original 12th century definition of wealth was the condition of well-being and happiness. And yet, You choose to stay in misery. You choose to engage in practices that continue to make you unwell. And I know I'm not judging. Trust me, because you guys know I have grown with you. We've grown together over the last several years. And I have awakened to see where I was choosing to stay in dysfunction and in a space that did not serve me. I was creating a definition of wealth that did not align with being well in every area of my life, truly. So one of the first signs that you're not as free as you think you are and something that I had to contend with is using external definitions to describe wealth rather than relying on your internal measures. So instead of making it about material possessions and money, which is why many of us are chained to jobs we hate, why many of us have created pretty prisons that were supposed to be our purpose work and we took a lot of bad behavior into our entrepreneurial journeys, why many of us are in churches and organizations and clubs and all these things that have maybe some societal status, but you don't have any peace at night, you don't have any joy, you don't have any contentment, you don't have any fulfillment. We have leaned more into the external definitions than we have our own internal liberation because there's liberation that comes from detaching your self-worth and your wealth, your understanding of wealth from material possessions and societal expectations. So you are not free if you are still using external definitions to describe wealth in your life. If you can't look at wealth relationally, emotionally, spiritually, mentally, in all these other areas, and it can only be defined by what your job title is and what your salary is and what you have in the bank, you are not free. So you cannot make decisions from a place of faith and freedom. You're going to continue to make decisions and choices from a place of fear. That's number one. Number two, you are not free if you cannot be radically honest. If radical honesty scares you, you are not free because radical honesty is the ultimate expression of self-love. And so if you still have a fear around being vulnerable, around judgment, around being transparent, and I'm not saying with every single person, but if the core relationships in your life don't give you the space to be radically honest about what you need, want, and desire, You are not free. If you have to walk on eggshells, if you have to pick and choose when you can have a conversation, I was trained that I had to watch the time of day, my tone, the delivery, the length of what I was saying, all of these things. I was trained. I was trained that it was better. And I've said this before on the podcast to be selective about when I use my voice, powerful voice on stage and on the mic. 
not always the same in relationship. And the same God that blessed me with this voice would not be selective about when and where I could use it. I just choose to believe that that's not true. And so I had to look at, if I can't be radically honest with the people closest to me, this is not freedom. This feels like prison. This feels like hell. Because being able to embrace vulnerability and be radically honest is the pathway to deeper connection. It is the pathway to deeper relationship. It is the thing that leads us to having intimacy. And if we cannot have intimacy with the relationships that are closest to us, are we really free? I didn't feel free. And I knew for me, that that was something that I had to be set free from to really experience the type of love that I desire, but to become all of who I am. Being able to practice radical honesty with myself first. And I said, you're not free. Radical honesty scares you because radical honesty begins with us. Many of us don't tell ourselves the truth. And if we can't tell ourselves the truth and be honest about where we are, what we're feeling, what we're experiencing, what we're processing, if we have to walk into therapy and lie, If we have to walk into church and lie, how are you doing? Oh, blessed and highly favored. You can't ever say that something is actually going on, that something is is wrong. We as a society, as a culture, I know as a Caribbean woman, (laughs) grew up under this idea that I had to lie. I had to fake it to make it. I had to sweep things under the rug. I had to protect and cover. There's so many things that have contributed to a lack of radical honesty throughout the years. But true freedom is being able to express, again, what I need, want, and desire, but what I truly feel. And understanding that sometimes being radically honest and having that level of clarity can be offensive to people, but that's not mine to hold. That's not my problem. Because radical honesty and clarity are not about taking away anyone's dignity but it is about restoring my own. Number three, you are not free if you're still attached to people agreeing with your choices and life decisions. Seeking external validation is killing us, you guys. Having to get everyone to agree with you before you take a next step is killing us. It is killing our purpose. It is killing us spiritually. It is killing us financially because there are so many things that have been deposited in you that you have been mandated to do. You have been called to do. You have been anointed to do. And because other people don't see it, don't understand it, they weren't CC'd on the memo, you look to them instead of looking to you, looking inward and looking up to the one who called you. So if you're still attached to people agreeing with your choices and life decisions, you are not free. I am so grateful for how self-validation has been expanded in my life. I'm so grateful in the confidence and conviction I can walk in now with the choices that I make, regardless of other people's opinions. So that even when something doesn't work out, should it not work out, I take no L's. There's never a loss. I know that every step I take is moving me in the direction of what God has called me to. It doesn't mean that everything is a win, but you don't learn from win after win. A lot of us learn in what some would call a loss, but I just call a lesson. So I don't take L's in terms of losses. I only get lessons or blessings, but there is something so powerful about being free to own your choices. When something does not go right in my business, I do not look to a team member to blame. I start with, I take full responsibility. You don't have to agree with the choice. I take full responsibility no matter what the outcome is. There is liberation that comes from releasing the need to have everyone agree and everyone be on board with every single decision you make. Because guess what? If you are going to fail, you can fail sooner and learn the lesson sooner and move on sooner. That sounds like a win, win, win. But there's never really any fail. We just learn lessons and we move on. But this entire month, it's faith pillar month. These are the things that your faith are expanded with. These are the practical things where you have to learn how to do these things in order to see your faith grow. 
Because if you're spending time in the faith pillar and learning to hear God for yourself, why do I need to hear 16 other people if I know that I heard God for myself? I don't. Because that is that still small voice that I hear and experience, that nudge that says, hey, go in this direction. When you're still attached to people agreeing with your choices, more than likely you're not being obedient. Can we just say that? For those of us who call ourselves Christians, believers, people of faith, you understand that there's a blessing that comes with obedience and there's a curse that comes with disobedience. Read Deuteronomy. And the reality is many of us are not obedient to the things that we were called to do because we're attached to people who did not call us. We're attached to the opinions, the thoughts, and the ideas of people who did not call us. And ultimately, they are not responsible for whether we were obedient or not. I used to have a friend that would say, God doesn't speak to be heard. God speaks to be obeyed. I don't know where she got that from, but it stuck with me. And so when I feel that I've heard from God, my job is to obey. I knew what I heard throughout different seasons, whether it be in building this business or making choices in my personal life. It's undeniable. And so I had to become detached from other people's approval or agreeance so that I could become attached to what God told me, period. Now let's be honest. Have you ever felt guilty that too much of your closet has only been worn once? I know we've been talking about releasing a lot this month. So are you one of the people who has items going to Goodwill with the tag still on it? Like you, I love being on trend and having new things to wear, but I do hate the waste it creates. That's why I'm so glad it's officially springtime, which means it's the right time to refresh your wardrobe. But this time, you got to do it more responsibly. That's why I personally love testing out new looks and styles without impacting my money pillar by using a clothing rental membership from Armoire. Armoire allows you to rent high quality designer clothing for every occasion. And then guess what? You get to send it back. So whether you're planning your outfit for a date night or vacation or packing for a conference, you'll be the best dressed person in the room without cramping up that closet again. Right now, Redefining Wealth listeners can give Armoire a try and get up to 50% off their first month. That's up to $125 off. Just visit armoire.style slash wealth. That's armoire.style, A-R-M-O-I-R-E dot style slash wealth to get up to 50% off your first month and never worry about what to wear again. Try Armoire today and use my code wealth for a great deal. Now, I happen to be one of those people that are motivated to work out on my own, but I personally don't get the best fit pillar results I can when I don't use a professional trainer because everything that's permissible is not necessarily beneficial. But having a full life can make it so hard to get on the same schedule as a personal trainer. But when I discovered Future in January 2023, the game changed. It has helped me stay committed to my Fit Pillar goals on the go. It's a personal training app made to fit your life. You get a dedicated coach, personalized training plans, and access to unlimited workouts. And trust me, you will enjoy them. I would love for you to check out Future today if you know that you can do okay with your Fit Pillar by yourself, but you want that additional support and you really want to get serious about your Fit Pillar. Go to patricewashington.com slash future and get 50% off your first month today. That's 50% off your first month when you use my link patricewashington.com slash future. Number four. A sign that you may not be free every day feels like Groundhog's Day. If you have been stuck in a repetitive, monotonous routine, you are not living freely. A free person, a free woman, there is joy, there is life, there is spontaneity, there is something else. If you have just been on autopilot, if you have not embraced change and you don't know how long, if your hair has been the same for 20 years, girl, I love you, but it's time. If you won't take a risk with changing hair color, hair length, you've been wearing the same lipstick color for so many years, you have to get your nails done the same time. You are living in Groundhog Day. You did not come here to live the same day 
365 days a year and then multiply that times decades. That is not what you came here for. If you cannot explore everything that your town, your city, your country, your state has to offer you, you are not free. You are choosing to be confined. And that is living from a place of fear because you're not going to get it right 100% of the time. So what? Stop taking everything so seriously. So what? Oh, I always wear black. Okay, wear red. Surprise us. Wear a little pop of color. Do something different. Surprise yourself. You might like it. Give people a little wow. (laughs) Give yourself a little wow, a little something different. Exploring different passions, different hobbies, different colors, different interests. It infuses your life with excitement and meaning. It is a thing that like a full life is made of. If you are in a Groundhog's Day on autopilot, on automatic, you don't have to think about anything. You just go and you're in your routine and you're always stuck. It's saying that you are really living from a fixed mindset and not a growth mindset. You're not embracing change. You're not taking risks. You're not seeking new experiences. You're not doing things to break free from the stagnation. You are not free. You cannot tell me that you think that that's the life that God wants you to live day in and day out until you take your dirt nap. If this is speaking to you, I need you to make a commitment to do something different. Even if it's as small as I will change my lipstick color. Let me put my ponytail from the left side to the right side. Let me try to wear a different color dress. Like, let me just do something different. It can be so small. Start small, start where you are, but do something different. Be reminded daily that you are still alive. I don't care what you've experienced. I don't care how bad it was. You're still here, which means you're not done. There is so much still yet for you to do. And in that exploration, for those of you who are always sending me messages about, I don't know what my purpose is, Allow yourself to explore and your purpose will continue to reveal itself because clarity is going to come in the doing, but you have to go do something different. Number five, you are not free if your financial life has been stagnant for more than three years. If your financial life has been stagnant for more than three years, because going back to feeling like Groundhog's Day, you won't do anything different. You won't take any risks. You won't ask for the raise. You won't ask for the promotion. You won't look for a new job. You won't go to another industry. You won't speak up ever. If your financial life has been stagnant for three years, I'm going to say that you are probably not free. You have created a prison of some kind that you're just sitting in. So whether it's a fear of change or just a lack of financial literacy or limiting beliefs around money, I talk more about it now, Redefining Wealth, the app, but a lot of the biases that we cover in financial psychology, there is something there. You have a duty and responsibility, right, to continue to grow and expand. And financial empowerment is just one of those proactive steps that you should take towards financial well-being, Like we have to do something. So if it's seeking financial education, one of the things I'm really excited about are one of the partners I'm bringing on to Redefining Wealth so that they can do more of the financial literacy type stuff. I've just outgrown wanting to talk about budgets and credit reports. I feel God stretching me and expanding me in a different way. And I still don't know where we're going to land you guys, but I know that I can't go back. I know that that was God's introduction to this work, but it was just the beginning for me. But I want to make sure that we have the tools and resources here. So I am partnering with someone. And when that's solidified, I will let you guys know, but they will be doing financial education, financial literacy, like the meat and potatoes of it, the skill set stuff in the Redefining Wealth community in our app. But we got to do something different. It's not okay if you've made the exact same thing for three years. It's not. That means you haven't even been speaking up and knocking on doors or going to sit down and talk with a supervisor, a manager, somebody and to say something, which goes back to radical honesty. Because just the way inflation is set up, you have to allow yourself to grow financially. It's the only way you're going to experience greater freedom and security. It's the only way. And so it's a sign to you, man, 
it should be a sign to you that I have become so on autopilot and so fixed and so used to playing it safe and so used to not speaking up, so used to not demanding more. Maybe because one time I did and like that elephant, I didn't like the the feedback. I didn't like how it hurt. I didn't like the pain I experienced. So now, even though I'm this amazing person with all this experience, all this knowledge, all this brilliance, I've taken courses, I've read the books, listened to the podcast, and I still can't seem to put myself out there. I still can't seem to promote myself. I still can't seem to go look for another job, go do the interview. This is why I say, that there is no personal finance success without more personal development. Because a lot of times it's not the money. It's not your aptitude. There is something going on with your attitude. You are the huge grown adult elephant who has a piece of silly string tied around your ankle and acting like you are literally chained and anchored to something that does not exist. And yet we move through life with the illusion of freedom when we're not free. That's a sign that you're not free. Everything from fit pillar, people pillar, space pillar, faith pillar, there are things that are keeping you stuck. You're not free. And it's showing up in your finances and you think it's about money and it's not. And the last one, I believe that you're not free if you're still not clear on your purpose. I truly believe that purpose is never hiding from us. It's never under the mattress. It's never hiding in a closet or a cabinet. Purpose is with us all the time. Passion is what excites and energizes you. But purpose is how do you take your God-given gifts and use it to be a blessing to others? That does not mean you need to be an entrepreneur. It just means that you want to tap in to things that come to you naturally. Have you had to hone it? Yes. Have I had to hone my skills as a speaker, as a media person, as an author and all of that? Absolutely. But I was always a writer. Writer Writing came to me naturally as a little kid. I thought my first book was published in 2012. My mom found a book I was published in elementary school or junior high. Always been a writer. Always been a speaker. God talks too much on my report card my whole life. I remember starting this podcast and thinking, oh my gosh, how could I ever talk for 20 minutes into the abyss, into no one? And now they have to remind me often that I have to get these solo episodes over in 30 minutes. (laughs) Like it comes to me effortlessly. And I understand how frustrating it can be feeling unclear about your purpose, but I want you to know Your purpose is right there with you, has always been with you. But when we dismiss it as not as sexy or not as pretty as someone else's, when we're looking to the left and right and we're not just honoring what is in our belly, what is in our spirit, what is in us and we didn't have to fight to get it. When we are free to not be attached to the agreements of others with those choices, when we are free to be radically honest about what we really like, what we want to do, what we feel like we're good at, when we are free of external definitions of what this should look like, when we are free to allow ourselves to explore and try new things and put ourselves out there, purpose becomes one of the easiest things you can find. The path to purpose is really the path that is rooted in self-discovery, self-reflection, self-trust. Those are the things that open us up to new opportunities and experiences. That's how we get aligned with our values and the things that light us up, our passions. You're not free if you still keep saying you're not clear on your purpose. Not being clear on your purpose just exposes the fact that there are a lot of other parts in your life you're not yet free in. That's it. Are you ready for Redefining Wealth Alive 2024? I hope so, because we already have everything locked in and all we need is you, October 11th through 13th in Atlanta, Georgia. Do not miss this. Right now we have early bird tickets on sale. You know you want to come, so you might as well lock in that ticket right now. Click the link below or go to redefiningwealthlive.com to secure your seat today. So what do you do about it? One, be honest, first with yourself. 
And then with a group of people or someone you trust, it could be your therapist, it could be a best friend, it could be your life coach, it could be us in the Redefining Wealth community. But find people that you can be honest with once you're honest with yourself because you don't want to go back and forth with this alone. We have a tendency to talk ourselves in and out of things. So get honest with yourself about where you're not feeling free. And then I would say find free women in particular for those of you who identify as a woman and want to be in community with women, find free women. The best thing about the people pillar and creating relationships that matter is that it aligns you with the language. My coach, my personal coach, I choose over and over again, and I've been working with her now three years. I choose her because there is power and proximity. And the type of freedom and power and authenticity that she navigates life with is what I was attracted to, even when I couldn't put my finger on it. And so being in proximity to her is what keeps me free from making choices for my personal and professional life that I think other people desire or want to see from me. It keeps me being radically honest about what I need, want, and desire. And it keeps me aligned with my core values. Now, Is that a process that I'm just already in? Yes, but my coach has a coach and her coach has a coach. And I think that one of my newer clients, Tiffany, referred to me as the coach's coach, right? So I've actually attracted more and more people in my community who are working with me one-on-one or through one of the programs who are coaches themselves because there's something powerful about being connected and aligned and in proximity with free women. So if you're feeling stuck and not free, You can definitely talk to me, but it doesn't matter if it's me or not. Find someone who embodies the type of freedom and power that you want to walk and navigate this life with. Speak freeing language. I want to invite you to start paying attention to your language. When you refer to things that you're doing in your life, do you say that you have to or you get to? A have to person is in prison. A get to person is in power. They are free. Think about the language that you're using. Think about when words come out of your mouth, ask yourself, I always say, ask yourself better questions. Would a free woman speak like this? Would a free person respond like this? Would a free person tolerate or accept this? Ask yourself better questions so that you can start holding yourself to a new standard. Because the minute you say no, that gives you an indication that you get to go back and renegotiate some things. You get to go back and say, mm, that didn't work for me. So let me let me come back. Let me set new governing decisions that dictate like how I want to live my life. And I would say a big one, take action. And I'm not saying you have to take radical action. People always think that when I say take action, I'm like, oh, f- turn the whole place upside down and go do things. Sometimes that's my process and sometimes it's not. Sometimes I'm, when I'm sitting in observation, I'm looking, I'm, I'm sensing, I'm discerning when I should make a, a bigger move, a more radical move. But in the meantime, I do believe that God knows what you're waiting on when he sees what you're working on. And if I have to give a small step, I'm going to take a step. I'm going to take the next best step. I don't care how small it is. I don't care how insignificant it could seem to others. And that's the stance that you have to have. I am here to fight for my freedom and I don't care how small it is. I don't care if I'm just lacing my boots up today. That's a part of getting me prepared for the fight. I don't care if I'm just looking for the best gloves to purchase. That's a part of getting me ready for the fight. I don't care if I'm ordering the satin material for my little boxing shorts. (laughs) That's getting me prepared for the fight. What is one small step you can take? Because the path to truly living abundantly requires awakening that's arising from slumber, redefining, which is what we do here. We redefine for ourselves what we want things to look like and then actualizing, getting the guts to go after it. And so we have to go from Hey, being honest, that's a part of awakening, asking ourselves better questions, redefining, establishing what are the type of people I want to be around? How do I want to move? How do I want to speak? How do I want to look? How do I want to show up? What represents what I truly desire? And then let me take steps to go after it. That's our process in the Institute. And we do that in every single pillar. Now let me get the steps to go after it. That's a part of actualizing. So 
I don't know which one of these might resonate with you, but if you listen this far, I'm going to go out on a limb and say, you know that in this season, you are not as free as you think you are. And I want us to live free as a community. I want us to be people, women in particular, who can make choices from a place of faith, not fear. That is true freedom. That is true wealth. That is true success. When you can say, I am doing what I want to do, how I want to do it, with whom I want to do it, for how long, and I know that everything that I'm experiencing is authentically what I desire in this season. When you can say that you are more so living from a place of freedom, I think, than anyone. Now you are the powerful elephant that can say, you can't hold me here with silly string. You can't hold me here with a piece of thread. Like, and... Even the chains and anchors that you think that you could wrap around me, they cannot hold. I'm too big. I'm a giant. God created a giant when he created me. My purpose is too big. What I've been called to do is too big. Who I've been called to serve is too big. Like the the mandate on my life is too big. I'm not going to let you hold me here. And many of us have spent too many years confined, too many years in bondage, too many years bound, too many years enslaved in pretty prisons that we created. And it's time to break free. It is time to be set free. It is time to unchain ourselves from those fears. And it is just time to live free. And I hope that this was a blessing to you. I invite you to rate and review the podcast. I invite you to share your thoughts and reflections in the comments, wherever you are listening. Let me know if this was a blessing to you because It was truly on my heart. That story of the elephant made me think of the brilliant people that I have served in so many capacities and how I see us anchored to things that just don't serve us and sitting in spaces that don't just serve us. And I want this community to be set free. So come into the Redefining Wealth app, get the guide. This guide this month is going to bless you. Answer those questions and begin to set yourself free. Begin to set yourself free. And if you're really feeling froggy, come and be set free with us at this year's Redefining Wealth Live in Atlanta in October. It's going to be absolutely amazing. Our theme is live free and come and do the work with us. There's nothing more powerful than being in the room and being in the energy of people who are like-hearted and like-minded and we're walking towards living freely, speaking the language doing the work, being it, not just talking about it, but being it and putting it into practice is really beautiful. So you can find out more at redefiningwealthlive.com. And thank you guys. I'm really excited about the episodes that are upcoming. You're going to hear from more free women this month on the podcast. Next week, I'll be back with how to remove the burden of shame with Latoya Matthews. Powerful conversation. You don't want to miss it. And then after that, Maisha Cheney will be here. Incredible woman also sharing her freedom story. This is a great month. I want us to be empowered to live for you guys. Let's do this together. Until next time, it's Patrice Washington. And I want you to go live your life's purpose, find fulfillment, and of course, earn more without feeling like you have to chase money. I'll talk to you later. Mo Dig Haul Lift. The versatile Kubota BX Series subcompact tractor does it all. Switching attachments is simple, and a smooth hydrostatic transmission makes for easy operation. The Kubota BX Series, rated number one in durability and owner experience. Talk to your local Kubota dealer today to schedule a demo. Go to KubotaUSA.com for full disclaimer. CEC Turf and Tractor. On the web at CECTurfandTractor.com. You know how to book flights and hotels. All you're missing is a tool to plan the travel experiences you'll have once you arrive. That's why you need Viator. Book guided tours, excursions, and more in one place. There are over 300,000 travel experiences to choose from, so you can find something for everyone. And Viator offers free cancellation and 24-7 customer support for worry-free travel. Download the Viator app now and use code Viator10 for 10% off your first booking in the app. Find travel experiences for you. Do more with Viator.